Welcome to this week's Quick Charge. When God's people faced the entrance to their inheritance, that land of promise, the way was blocked by a rushing river. But their leader Joshua gave them some crucial instructions to ensure their access into God's special land. He said, when you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God, you must leave here and walk behind it. Keep your distance so you can see which way you should go, for you have not traveled this way before. From these simple instructions, we can glean some very important life lessons. One of those is this, there is a way I should go. There is one way for you, one way for me. It's God's way. It's God's design. There is a journey. There is a path that is prescribed and prepared for me and for you. So no matter the situation or the issue or the predicament or the circumstance, there is a way in and a way out and a way up and a way through and a way around and a way over and a way past and also a way that has been set for me. God has the way for me. Life is not a lottery. It's not a game of chance. It's not a matter of faith or luck. It's not a crapshoot. This is the way that I should go. No more. Just a couple of ways. Nothing. There are no several different ways. It's not just any old way that will do. There is one way. For them, there was one way across the Jordan into their land, their future, the promises of God, and it was God's way. He has prepared the way for you just as he did for them. Another very brief life lesson is this, the way is not obvious. God made it clear to them when he said, you really don't know where you're supposed to go. It's not plain, it's not apparent, this is not a no-brainer. He said to them, you have not traveled this way before, so you won't know the way on your own. Solomon said there is a way that seems right, but it ends in death. I don't want to rely on my best guess. I don't want to rely on my own understanding. So this way or that way or some way or one way might seem good, but it may not be the way. God said, you've not traveled this way before. And you know, you could say that about the way of life. You could say that about tomorrow. We don't know what's next. We don't know what's ahead. You could say that about the way of the Lord because we don't know what God has in store and what God has prepared for us. Oh, perhaps generally we do, but not specifically. And also, we don't know about the way of the enemy, the schemes and the strategies and the stumbling blocks that are being formed against us. Remember Paul, he was bitten on the hand by a viper. The hand represents an instrument of authority or ministry or impartation. And you see, Paul never knew when he might face an attack, not just against his body, but also against his soul. You see, you never know when your past will be brought up and used against you. When they said to him, this man is a murderer, and that's why he has been, been bitten by the snake. Well, that was technically true, but Paul had been eternally expunged by the power of the cross from all that had happened previously in his life. So with regard to the journey, it's not obvious that I can know the way on my own. God says, you need me to show you the way and point you the way. Perhaps you're in need today of knowing the way for your life, just as they were. Why not come to Jesus? Why not seek him? And why not find his way for you? It won't be obvious, 
but it will be just what you need. Join me next week for another quick charge as we explore one more life lesson from this scene. God bless.